get slain in the spirit or whatever. Uh, um, uh, we just, let's just, whatever, however you want to worship. I was going to say something else, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that. Uh, David, well, David worshiped, right? And he started taking his clothes off, so don't do that. But, but, uh, but he was in the presence of God. Things can happen when, when God gets a hold of someone, amen? But just keep your clothes on. Uh, so, uh, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm ready to get set free. You know, I mean, I, we are set free. The, the idea is to stand in that freedom. Amen. Right. And so how many, how many are believe that they've been set free this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. And listen, hey, if you're going through something, that's OK, because like I said, if you're if you're if you're not going through something, you're probably not much of a threat to the enemy. Right. But when you take a stand for Christ, get ready. But we fight from victory. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and we just thank you for what you're about to do this morning, Lord God. We thank you for Pastor Misha. We thank you that for the word that you have already given him, Lord God, for your church on this day, at this hour, at this season in our lives, Lord God. I pray that our hearts would be uh, uh, open, Lord God, to your word this morning. And as we sing, uh, we would sing unto you, Lord God, and that you would be blessed. And Lord, that you would just bless us with your presence, Lord God, and just shake this place in a way that only you can do, Lord God. And we just ask this all. For your glory in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand if you can. Let's all worship. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. next song. Let's all sing together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
on, church. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes to my heart, Lord. Open the eyes to my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes to my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. And I want to see you. Saturday, you guys, if you're not working or doing anything, we're going to have a, Pastor Bill is going to continue his Saturday study here. Right. What time do we decide? 9 a.m.? Yes, sir. 9 a.m. right here. So that's for you guys in Riverside Homes as well. Uh, and the men here, if you're not on a job or any doing anything, we expect you guys here 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Right. Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so we're having some technical difficulties this morning. I guess the bands are here. I we'll we'll get this set up, but hey, it's all good. Um, as we sing this, as the band sings this next song, we worship. You feel led to give uh, the little green box on that side of the speaker is our tithe and offering box. Uh, go ahead and do that while we're singing the song, just in an orderly fashion, because we have some people in here. Uh, maybe take turns or whatever, and then get back to your seat. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we just pray your 
blessing over these uh, givings, Lord God. Bless the giver, Lord God. It's all yours, Lord God, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One, two, shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, everyone. 
Come on. Yeah. Amen. God is worthy of our praise. Amen. It's funny because as I was driving up this morning, I was sitting there vacillating between several messages the Lord had given me that I could have brought here. And I kept saying, Lord, but I, I really want to know exactly what is it that you want to speak to the people here this morning. I'm glad that we have such a full house because there's so much stuff coming down from government and, 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 uh, and, and everything trying to use a virus to restrict the uh, uh, church, the ability for us to worship. And we know that the virus is real like many things that we've had to overcome, but we also believe that, I don't believe that the church has been a rampant spreader of COVID-19 that hasn't been proven at all in the United States. And I think there comes a point in time where we have to decide, are we going to obey God's laws or man's laws? And so I'm glad to see us get together with, with courage to worship the Lord today, knowing that God will bring us through this, okay? And I, I couldn't help but overhear uh, the pastor this morning uh, speaking about uh, the trials that we go through and, and God bringing us through them. And that was exactly what, what God had given me. I was marking my messages as I was setting up our camera for those. And by the way, this is being uh, live cast. Uh, so there, I welcome all of those that are watching on television this morning. Uh, I know that there are a lot from all around the world that are watching the service right now that follow our ministry, and since we're over here, they're following the ministry here, and I know Pastor Andrew uh, broadcasts also, although I guess I'm doing it uh, today. But we want to welcome everybody, those that couldn't make it out to services uh, today, and those of you that are here today, because I believe that God has something to say to all of us this morning, okay? And so this morning, with every head bowed, and every eye closed, I would like to just uh, begin and open with prayer. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to bring your message here this morning, Lord. And Father, I pray that the words that I speak, Lord, will not be my words, Lord, but will be uh, words that will be anointed and will come from your Spirit. Father, you said my spirits, my words are spirit in their life, and I pray this morning that they will bear fruit in the hearts of each person that hears, that every spirit of distraction this morning will be bound, and Lord Jesus, that you'll have your way this morning, and I thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 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 So this morning I'd like everyone, if you have your Bibles with you, please, to turn to Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading in verse 19, and this morning we will do a little reading, okay? How many of you can say Bible study? Say it. Study. Say it loud. Come on. Bible study. Amen. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And folks, it's so important that we get into the Word of God. It's important that we read the Bible, that in the midst of all the things that we do, the holiday season, the, the restrictions, and all the things that are going on, work, the things that... That, that you have to go out and do that. We don't get distracted from our purpose, okay? I think about uh, 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 Nehemiah who was building the wall, and that this wasn't part of my, my, my sermon today, but it's so true how as Nehemiah is building the, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, um, uh, two men come, and they decide that they want to do everything that they can to create problems and to distract them. And they try to, uh, to, to threaten them not to finish the wall. And then finally when they see that's not working, they want him to come down. They want to argue it out with them. And he says, look, I'm doing a mighty work in God and I can't come down. I haven't got time for you. I've got to do what it is that God has called me to do. I haven't got time to be distracted by the things that are going on in this world. I have my focus on rebuilding the wall. I have my focus on doing what God has called me to do. And folks, every one of us, we need to begin to seek the Lord. We need to know what has God called us to do. And then we need to do it knowing that as we do it, God will supply the means and He will provide for us the way to get it all done. Okay? And that, that, that is so important. When Nehemiah built the wall, I like the last part of it that says, And the wall was completed. The enemy tried, did everything he could, everything he could to try and to stop them from, him from rebuilding the wall. But because he knew what God wanted him to do, he stuck to the vision that God had put within his heart. He knew the word that was over him and over his life and over those that were following him because he didn't build that wall by himself. But just like here at uh, Menifee Set Free, you're building a wall. God has got something for you to do, to do together here. 
Okay, God gave them the protection to finish that wall, and the wall was completed. And I believe that the Lord is going to do the same thing here. I know the God that we serve. I know the faithfulness of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 So beginning reading in verse 19, okay, then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with wrath. Why was he filled with wrath? Because Daniel, was, it was reported, I'm sorry, that, uh, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, to King Nebuchadnezzar. At this time, the Israelites, okay, had been exiled. Exiled because of their disobedience to God. Exiled because they had forsaken the way of the Lord. They had been exiled. They were taken captive by the Babylonians and brought into Babylon and made slaves. And folks, Israel was the chosen country. They were the chosen people of God. Let no one in America and in this country ever believe that we can go about and rampantly be disobedient to God, rampantly disregard His will, and not suffer the consequences of it. Okay? Because the Israelites, God's chosen people, were dragged into Babylon. Okay? And dragged into Babylon as slaves. They were allowed to be overtaken because they did not want, or the majority of the people didn't want God's will. But there were some righteous people left. Okay? And I see a lot of that similarity here in this country today, where there are a lot of people that don't want the will of God. They've, they've, they've left God out of everything. But thou, I also see a God bringing forth a mighty army. A mighty army of people. The true church of God. A true remnant, okay, that doesn't thrust one another through, but marches as a mighty army to see His will done. Okay, and I believe that it's these people where the Bible says, Greater work shall you do because I go to the Father. I believe it's these people that will rise up in the midst of all of this, and we will see the greater works. We will see the miracles that Jesus promised in His Word of God that would come forth in the end time through the church. Folks, we're living in an exciting time. Amen. I don't know if you can amen, and because I think I'm preaching louder than you're amening this morning. Amen. But I would be excited about the times that we're living in. I really would. The Bible says that the prophets of old desired to see the days that we're living in. They desire to see these days. God is about to move on this earth, folks. Amen. God is about to move in this country, folks. Amen. God is about to move and set free Amen. this morning. I mean, you're going to see miracles. Yes, like our pastor said here, you're going to see people slain in the Spirit. You're going to see people miraculously healed. I, I've already seen it in, 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 in our own ministry, my wife and I, as we've gone out and we've ministered at many, many different churches. We've seen God perform one miracle after another another and i'm telling you god is moving in the earth today amen okay yeah. and so we need to be encouraged this morning amen. amen so verse 19 nebuchadnezzar when he finds out it's reported to him that shadrach and meshach and abednego okay would not bow down to him okay and would not worship him as a god okay it says that he was filled with wrath and his facial expression was altered towards shadrach meshach and abednego and he answered by giving orders to heat a furnace, okay? To heat a furnace several times more than what it was usually heated. And he commanded certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to cast them into a furnace of blazing fire. And then these men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, and their caps, and in their clothes, fully dressed, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fire. And for this reason, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was made extremely hot, the flame of the fire slew. It killed the men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up to that furnace. Amen? Amen. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell in the midst of the furnace of blazing fire still tied up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, he was astounded and he stood up in haste. And he said to the high officials, was it, was it not three men that we cast bound in the midst of the fire? And they replied to the king, certainly, O king. And he said, look. He said, look. He said, look, I see, I see four men loose and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Amen. And then Nebuchadnezzar came nearer to the door of the furnace of the blazing fire, and he responded, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out, you servants of the Most High God. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out, you servants 
of the Most High God. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar had a revelation. God revealed Himself at that moment to Nebuchadnezzar when he saw him forth, looking like the Son of Man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the furnace, fully clothed. What does the Bible go on to say? As we continue reading, it says in verse 27, So the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, and the king's high officials gathered around, and they saw in regards to these men that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men, Amen. nor was a hair of their head even singed, Amen. nor were their trousers damaged, Amen. nor had the smell of the fire even come upon them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God. I don't know if you can say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed, blessed be the God. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen. who has sent his angel and delivered his servants. Right. Sent his angel and delivered his servants amen. who put their trust in him. Who put their trust in Him. Amen. He delivered His servants who put their trust in Him. Violating the King's commandments. And yielded up their bodies as not to serve or worship any God except their own God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When we serve God, folks, only good things happen. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there may be battle. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they were all thrown into the furnace. God did not spare them from being thrown into the furnace. Amen. Amen. But once they were in the furnace, God spared them from harm. Amen. And He brought them forth and He delivered them. Amen. Amen. And out of their deliverance came a revelation of God to the king. Out of their deliverance came a revelation of God to the uh, all those that were around to the what they called the sea traps and the or, or whatever and the princes and all the people that were with Nebuchadnezzar, but all those people there that were there to witness it had a revelation of the Lord because God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were not even singed, their clothes were not even burned, there was not even the smell of smoke on them. Amen. Folks, I want you to know this morning that those whom the Lord has set free, as the Bible says, are set free indeed. Amen. And I bring Amen. that because of the name of this church, Set Free. And I'm looking at that over there. If you look at the wall right over there where I'm pointing. Yes. Do you see that set free, word set free? And what do you see? Shackles, right? Yes. But I don't see those shackles this morning connected together. No. I see the shackles broken apart. Amen. Hallelujah. I want everyone here. I think we ought to give the Lord a hand clap this morning. I do. Because I want you to know that the God that we served yesterday is still the great God that we serve today. Amen. I want you to know this morning that it doesn't matter what they say on television or in the media. God is still in control. Amen. He controls the winds. He controls the storms. Amen. He controls everything that's going on in this world. Yes, even the devil is under His control. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know this morning we have nothing to fear. Because we serve the God of the Most High. Amen. We serve the Most High God. Amen. We have nothing to fear, but the, the only thing that lies ahead of us this morning is victory. Amen. In the things that we do, in our relationships with one another, in our relationships with Him, Amen. God delivers us from the fire. Amen. And others will look on in amazement when they see us walk through. Amen. And they see us come out without even the smell of smoke. Without any singes. And folks, this morning, I don't care what you're going through. Some of you may be in the, right in the, in, the, in the moment of being thrown into the furnace. Maybe your hands are tied. Maybe you've been bound up. Maybe you feel like you're ready to be thrown in the fire. And there is no escape from the fire, it seems. You're about to be thrown in. But in the midst of the fire, there will be a fourth man that will walk with you, the Son of God. Amen. And He will be there to bring deliverance. That's the God that we serve, folks. Amen. If that wasn't the God that we served, I wouldn't preach here this morning. Amen. Amen. There would be no point in coming. Right. 
It was like the apostle said, if the Lord Christ has not risen, we might as well eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. If it weren't real, we might not as well, we, 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 we just as well should just go on and do something else. Go back out in the world and live in sin. No. But thank God we serve a living God. Amen. We serve the only God, the only God. Amen. Of all the false gods, Amen. we serve the one that's alive today. Amen. This morning you can go and if you can find the graves of Muhammad, you'll find that he's in the grave. Amen. Those founders of Buddha, I don't know where they are, but they aren't alive. They're in the grave. Amen. Krishna, those that, that founded the Hindu religion and every other religion that's out there today, <laughs> The, 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 the life has run its full course up with them. And they're in the ground. But this morning we can rejoice because we serve a God that is risen. Amen. We serve a God Amen. that is alive today. He, uh, we serve a God, folks, that is not dead. We serve a God, folks, that still works. Amen. He still answers prayers. Amen. Amen. And that is something to be excited about. Amen. Amen. I, I heard the opening comments to the pastor, Andrew. And it was exactly the word this morning that God had. Because I sat my Bible down. I asked my wife, give me something to mark some pages. And she said, I don't have anything. So I dog-eared the pages that I was going to read from. Because the Lord had given me the same word coming in. I already knew this was the message. And then I heard that. And then I knew, thank you, God. You were so faithful for bringing the right word all the time. No matter where we go. Amen. Oh, look, yeah. listen, folks. God is not doesn't give that about the guy that can come up to the pulpit and preach have preach a sermon, but He's looking for the person that can know the voice of the Lord, hear the voice of the Lord, and that's 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 what He's calling every one of us to do is to be able to know His voice, hear His voice, be obedient to His voice, walk in His will, Amen. and walk in His way. Amen. Okay, God is not after religion this morning, but He's after you. Amen. Amen. He's after your heart. Amen. And this is the day that we serve the Lord. Amen. This is the day. This is an exciting time. We're in the best of times, not the worst of times. Amen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just sit here this morning and I, I, I sense the power of the Holy Spirit here this morning. Amen. I really do. Amen. Oh my gosh. We're, we're living in exciting times. The Bible says the prophets of old desired to see these days that we're living in. God is about to manifest Himself in an unbelievable way. Amen. Is persecution going to come? Yeah, it'll come. Amen. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. Amen. No slave is greater than his master. Amen. But we saw it happen right here in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, didn't we? They were persecuted because they wouldn't bow down and worship to King Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. They wouldn't accept him as the Lord. Just like we're not going to accept the God's of this world as our own gods. Amen. They wouldn't go back to something or, 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 or submit to something that wasn't the will of God. Just like you're Amen. not going to go back or you're not going to submit to something that's not Amen. the will of God. But they stood fast in their faith, even if it cost them to be thrown into the furnace. But once they were in there, once they were in the furnace, okay, the Lord was there with them and they came out unsinged. Folks, I don't care how late, I don't care if it's the midnight hour. Okay, God is still in there. God is still in control. Amen. God is never too late. Yes, Turn with me to chapter Daniel chapter 6. Just a few pages over, please. Again, we're going to be, I guess there must be something about the number 16 this morning. I think the last one we started was verse 16. But we're going to go to verse 16 again. We know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were among those righteous men of, of Israel that were taken into captivity in in, in uh, Babylon. But, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego also had a friend. They knew each other. And that was Daniel. You heard of Daniel, right? Amen. Well, he was also one of those that was as a young boy, probably at the age of 16, I believe, was taken into captivity in, in, in Babylon. But he served the Lord. And people didn't like Daniel there was a, because Daniel had favor. He seemed to have favor with the king. And so they set him up and put him in a position where an order went out that if he didn't worship the Lord that, or, 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 or if, uh, if uh, others didn't worship 
the, the king as Lord, okay, that they would be killed, they would be punished. Daniel wouldn't do it. Daniel wouldn't do it. Here's another man, okay, that refused to bow down to the things of the world. He refused to bow down to the things of the enemy. He re refused to compromise his faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This Amen. 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 Okay, and let's see what happened to him. Because see, once the, once the, the king, I'm just going to do a little bit of fill in so we don't have to read the whole thing. Once the king uh, makes his law, he puts a, you know, he, it's like ink on a stamp. He has a signet ring. And he dips that, he puts that ring into some ink, and he stamps it on a page, and once that signet ring is printed on there, that can't be reversed. It can't be reversed. So when the news came to the king that Daniel was not going to worship, the king who liked Daniel understood it. He understood. Still had to go through with it, the punishment. Because he had placed his signet ring and signature on that paper and it couldn't be changed. So he was hoping all along, I hope Daniel gets through this. I don't know how he's going to do it. But I hope I don't kill this guy. Let's read. Because the king had to go on and do what he said he was going to do. Verse 16. So then the king gave orders... <coughs> And Daniel was brought in and cast in the lion's den. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. This is a king, the, the foreign Babylonian king, who had already now witnessed the miracles of God, was about to see it again. And this man who, who had proclaimed himself God, and was being torn between the real God and torn between his own people to, to proclaim himself as being God, knew in his heart that there was someone greater than him. And he turned around to Daniel and he said, Look, i got to do this, but I know your God will deliver you. Amen. Verse 17, And a stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring. And with the signet rings of his nobles, so that nothing would be changed in regards to Daniel. And then the king went off to his palace and he spent the night fasting. And no entertainment was brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. He couldn't even sleep. Then the king arose at dawn, at the break of day, and he went in haste to the lion's den. And when he had come near the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and he said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you constantly serve been able to deliver you from the lions? And he heard quiet for a moment. But then Daniel spoke to the king, praise God. Amen. Daniel spoke to the king, praise God. Amen. Amen. And he said, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angels. My God shut the mouths of the lions. Amen. And they have not harmed me inasmuch as I was found innocent before him. Amen. And also towards you, O oh, king, I have committed no crime. And then the king was very pleased and he gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Because he had trusted in his God. Amen. Folks, because he had trusted in his God. Amen. No injury was found on him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he had trusted in his God. Amen. Then the king gave orders and brought those men who had maliciously accused Daniel. And he cast them, their children, and their wives into the lion's den. And they had not even reached the bottom of the den before the lions overpowered and crushed all their bones. Folks, those that come against you, those that come against the church in this time that we're living in, will receive their just reward. Amen. I proclaim to those that are here this morning, I proclaim to those that are watching this morning on television, those that come against you when you're serving God and you've given your heart to the Lord will receive their reward. Amen. If they don't Amen. repent, they will receive their reward. Amen. But I want you to know also this morning that God is with you and He will protect you and He will bring you through these times. Amen. 
Whatever plague is out there. Okay, maybe you'll catch the plague. But God will deliver you from Amen. the plague. Hallelujah. I believe that. Amen. Maybe there'll be other things that will go on in your lives. You're being battled in your relationships. The enemy's turning uh, husbands and wives against each other or trying to do things. Turning brothers and sisters against each other. He's always at work because he comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. You have to know who you're fighting this morning, folks. The Bible says that we war not against flesh and blood, not even your own, not that of your mate, not that of your friend here in the service, okay? We don't war against flesh and blood, but unseen principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the God that we serve. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen, lovely? Praise God. That's it. Folks, stay in the faith. Amen. Stay in the faith. Amen. Walk with God. This life, folks, it's, it's only temporal. Temporal. The Bible says anyway about it. It's like a blade of grass. It rises in the morning and in the new day it flourishes, but by evening it's gone. Our life is like a vapor, the Word says. We're here today Gone tomorrow. Amen. None of us on this earth will live forever. Amen. But folks, if we could see the, where we're living today, I know to you, we look around, we see each other, and, 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 and this world seems so real because it's the only thing we've known. See, we know the five senses, right? What are they? See, feel, smell, hear, I don't know, taste, touch, whatever. You know what they are. We base everything on that. But if you could be in, in heaven, folks, you would see that this world is a mirage. It's like a mirage. Amen. You're only here for a period of time. This is a testing Amen. period for each one of your lives to determine, based upon the decisions you make, the choices that you make, where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. Though the word in the, uh, the, the Bible, I believe it's the book of, I think it's the book of Deuteronomy, says, I lay before you the, today a blessing and a curse, life and death. Choose life. Amen. You have a choice. Everything that's going to happen from today on, okay, is going to be based upon the choices that you make. You're, whether you enter into heaven or you don't enter into heaven, whether you receive victory or you don't receive victory, it depends upon your choice. Choose life. Amen. It's full of choices, folks. Our life is full of choices. Some people say, I don't understand. I don't understand you Christians. How could a good God that you serve send people to hell? Well, God doesn't send anyone to hell, folks. We send ourselves there. He's just trying to keep us from going. Amen. But it's based on the choices that we make. Amen. Uh, we have an opportunity here to choose the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. <clears throat> to choose the God that so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. Amen. An ever laughing life. Amen. <laughs> yeah. We have a right to choose. Oh, we can go and choose to go our own way. God is not after puppets. Amen. This morning, choose this day whom you will serve. Amen. Because I want you to know, in wrapping up this message, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to choose this day whom they would serve. I want you to know this morning as I wrap up this message that Daniel, on that day, had to choose that day whom he would serve. Amen. Amen. And that today the word, the edict, the command given out by God in the Spirit is this day, folks, you must choose whom you will serve. Amen. And then serve Him faithfully. May Amen. God bless the Word. Everyone give the Lord a hand clap. Yes. Oh, I, I know it wasn't an hour word. I have no idea how long we went. I don't think we went very long. But you know, you hit the anointing and you stop. You don't go beyond it just because you've got the pulpit and you can preach. I, I see some ministers get up and preach and they've hit the anointing 20 minutes ago and they're still on the pulpit talking. And by the, and they, they just blow it. They blow it. They just burn it off. we got to know when to stop. Amen. And it's time to stop. The Word has been given. We need to walk in it. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. I just think that, you folks, if we can applaud for a, a Super Bowl, I don't want you to applaud for me. But I, I really think, men, as an aff affirmation of our faith this morning, that we ought to give the Lord not just a hand clap, but a cheer. Amen. I think a men of peace set free church Woo! cheer in the midst of persecution right now with a hand clap and a cheer is what we ought to do. Amen. Amen. One, two, three. Let's pray. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! Jesus! Hallelujah! That's the, that, that is the enthusiasm. That is what will get you through. That is what will break you through. Amen. You feel that there's bridges up today? Shout them down. Amen. Let's knock the walls of Jericho down this morning. We'll walk around them, walk around them a few times, but then we'll shout and the walls will come down. Amen. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violent and violent men take it by force. Amen. Folks, it's, in, it's, not, it's not going out with a gun or going Amen. out with bricks. Amen. The violence is a spiritual violence. It's Amen. an intensity that says, I refuse to be shut up. I refuse to be shut Amen. down by the Amen. devil. I refuse to be defeated this morning. Amen. I refuse to let the enemy into my marriage. Amen. I refuse to let the enemy into my relationships with others. Amen. I refuse to let the enemy control my health. Amen. Yeah, we're all we're all gonna go through some fire, but God will bring us out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much, Lord, for just the opportunity, Lord, to bring this message, Father. Lord, I know that there are those this morning probably that that wanna give their lives to the Lord and recommit their lives. And I'm not gonna ask anyone to come forward this morning as I usually have an altar call. But this morning I'm going to do, have you do it from your seats because, folks, I can't save any of you. Whether you come here to the front or whether you stay back there, I can't save you. But you need to make a profession this morning. And if, if there's anyone here and you know in your heart, Lord, I have been slacking. I have been being, I, the enemy's kicked me around long enough. I need to make a recommitment here and I need to do, to, to, to mean it and to say I surrender. If that's you this morning, raise your hands so I can see them. I see a lot of hands going up. Man. A lot of hands. And if there's anybody here and you say, Lord, I need to ask you into my life because I've never done it before, raise your hands. Keep your hands up for a minute, those of you that raise them. Amen. A lot of hands, folks. Okay, what I want you to do, I want you to stay where you're at. You don't need to stand. The Bible says, with the heart of man believes, but with the mouth confession is made Amen. unto salvation. Amen. So we're going to pray this prayer, and I want the whole church to pray with you, and I want you to pray. Folks, listen, before you pray, one thing. Words are only words. You've heard me say this, but I'm going to say it again. Words are only words unless you mean them. Amen. You can come up to this altar and say all the right things, but if you don't really mean it, it means nothing. Amen. It's no different than if I walk over to somebody and tell you I love you. You've heard that all the life you've been in relationships. That person that said that to you or you said that to them are nowhere to be found this morning. Amen. Because it was only words. But words are real when you mean them. Amen. This morning mean them. If you raise your hand this morning, then pray with all your heart this morning with me. And I want the church to pray out loud. Everybody stay where you're at. Nobody has to stand up. Okay. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe, I believe that you died, that you died on the cross, everyone, the cross for my sins. For my sins. That you rose from the dead on the third day. That you're alive today. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, I know that I have sinned. I know I failed. I know I've fallen short of your glory. But this morning I repent. This morning I ask you, Lord Jesus, into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, this morning, I surrender my life to you as Lord. Not just as Savior, but as Lord. And I give myself to you. I choose life this morning. And Lord, I thank you. I commit to you, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, because of what you did on the cross, because of your love, your mercy, and your grace to serve you 
all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And I thank you for it. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Pastor Andrew, come on in. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you guys. Pastor Andrew, Lord bless you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to do communion now. Sister Lovely's going to come and lead us in uh, communion. Um, does the band, you guys want to come sing a song? Acapella? Yeah, that's fine. Um, thank you. Uh, so while sh the, they're singing a song, um, just take your, we're going to have to come over here and get the elements. Uh, just kind of do it single file, um, in the same direction, so we're not bumping into each other. Um, grab your, your, elements and then go back to your seat and then uh sister lovely is going to lead us um but i always encourage you guys you know we're taking communion um we're communing with god it's a very serious thing so you know trying to respect other people and and and, and god mostly as amen. we commune amen and really remember what he did for you and, and for me amen? amen as we remember the blood that was shed right and his amen. body that was broken for us, and so this is should be a very um, personal uh, time of communion between each of us and God. Amen. So, Amen. as they sing, just like I said, uh, follow my son and get, grab your elements and go back to your seat. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, all oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship you, oh my soul. Rejoice, take joy. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's now break the bread and partake it. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For let's all partake and partake with our the, the blood, the element. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus' body and we thank you for Jesus' blood that do save us from our sins, that do heal our bodies, that do deliver us, Lord, from every bondage. We pray right now, Lord, to remind us always of what he had done thousands of years ago and to remember who we are in Christ, Lord, every day of our lives. As this coming week, Lord, we pray for blessings, increase, and favor in our lives because of what he had done on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.